Right, this is a, a second practical looking at simple harmonic motion. Or SHM. And this time we're going to, the first one looked at mass on a um, spring, and this time we're going to look at a mass that's swinging on a pendulum. And we're going to look for the time it takes to go there and back again, i.e. the time period. Now as before, and in theory, you should know that the time period is root L over G, where L is the length of this pendulum. G is obviously G on Earth, 9.81, and the time period. Once again, we're going to measure probably 10 lots of oscillation to improve our results. And after the 10 lots of oscillations, we're going to try and want to prove this equation to be correct. So, just like I did in the previous one, let me just square both sides of this expression. So t is 4 pi squared L over g. And therefore t equals just a small little rearrangement times L. Okay, I am changing L, I'm measuring T, independent, dependent. So my table of results will look like this. I'll have my length in meters, then the 10 lots of the time period in seconds, so I'm going to do 10 lots of them, once to three times an average. I then want the time period in seconds, and then finally what I'm looking for, whoops, can we back up here, that should be time period squared, <laughs> squared, I will want the time period squared in seconds squared. Okay, so there is my table of results, sorry about that small error at the beginning there, all will become clear now, however, as to why why we need the time period squared. Because essentially, if this holds true, and y equals mx plus c, if I plotted y squared, sorry, t squared on my y-axis, and l on my x-axis, then I should get an, a straight line with the gradient equaling to 4 pi squared over g. Let me just write that down again. If I was to plot t squared against L, I should get a straight line through the origin with the gradient equaling 4 pi squared over G. I could actually work out G by taking 4 pi squared divided by my gradient. So quite a simple idea. I'm going to have to be careful about taking the, um, the measurements. This should be a small angle in order for the, um, in order for this to hold true, or indeed you could use a long length, which creates a small angle. Anyway, let's see that in reality. Okay, this is my setup. <clears throat> I have a retort stand here, and though it's out of shot, it's, this rope is being suspended at the top. And the reason I've orientated it this way is because this arm at the back aligns itself with the rope quite neatly. And that means that when I do displace it, not a large angle but a small angle, this arm at the back becomes my reference point, what I should time, my fiducial marker in effect. Now lots of people ask, why can't it be right at the top because it's moving slowest? Well, that's a fair point. However, if I do time from that point, can you see how it's slowly moving away from my hand as the energy in the oscillation dissipates the surrounding, as it's being damped? So therefore, that's not a really good position because, I, because it will never reach my hand again. However, it is always going through the center line. So that should be your point, your fiducial marker. So for a given length, very straightforward. We just, when it goes through the middle point, I will start the timing, so there, one, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And there we go. And that is the time period. We merely do that three times, then we change the effective length, and we try it again three times, etc. etc. And here are a couple of results. We have there they are. So I've gone for quite a short length initially, and though I said we ought to go for a long length, it's quite hard to do it in the classroom. So we went from short length, I did go quite long as well, and everywhere in between, hopefully, even it looks like an odd number, that's just because how I wrapped it around uh, the, how I was securing the top. We've got an average, we've got a tenth of that, which is the time period, and then I've got the time period squared. And hopefully, all things map up well. We should, if we plotted the time period squared against the length, we should get a straight line through the origin, and you can work out what g is. Okay, so if you Go and plot those results, and if you want, there's a link to the results lower down.